One-Way Slab Design Introduction Slabs are constructed to provide flat surfaces, usually horizontal, in building floors, roofs, bridges, and other types of structures. The slab may be supported by walls, by reinforced concrete beams, usually cast monolithically with the slab, by the structural steel beams, by columns, or by the ground. Slabs are classified into two types, one-way slab and two-way slab. And for one-way slab, one-way slab is a slab which is supported by beams on the two opposite sides to carry the load along one direction. The ratio of longer span L to shorter span B is equal or greater than 2, considered as one-way slab because this slab will bend in one direction, in the direction along its shorter span. Longer span over shorter span or short span is equal or greater than value 2 and we considered as one-way slab. A one-way slab is considered as wide shallow rectangular beam. The reinforcing steel is usually spaced uniformly over its, its width. The flexural reinforcement of a one-way slab extends in one direction only. Maximum flexural reinforcement spacing, which is equal to three times the slab thickness or 450 millimeters. So that's the maximum distance or spacing of reinforcement bar. Minimum thickness of one-way slab. For solid one-way slab, L over 20 for simply supported, L over 24 for one end continuous, L over 28 for both end continuous, L over 10 for cantilever, and span length is or L is in millimeter. And for rib one-way slab, the minimum thickness is equal to L over 16 for simply supported, L over 18.5 for one end continuous, L over 21 for both end continuous, and our L over 8 for cantilever. Application of L over B ratio, long span or longer span over short span. In first figure, slab is supported on two opposite sides only. In this case, the structural action of the slab is essentially one way. And in second figure, there are beams on all four sides with an intermediate beam. Now, if length to width ratio is 2 or more or greater, slab is also one way even though supports are provided on all sides. Loading of one-way slab. When slabs are supported on two opposite sides, only loads being carried by the slab in the direction perpendicular to the supporting beams. When supports are provided on all sides, most of the load is carried in the short direction to the supporting beams and one-way action is obtained. Design and Analysis For purpose of analysis and design, a unit strip of such a slab is cut out, which may be considered as a rectangular beam of unit width, say, 1 foot or 1 meter, with a depth h or equal to the thickness of the slab and a span L equal to the distance between supported edges. The strip can be analyzed by the methods that were used for rectangular beams. This is the strip of a 1 foot or 12 inches or 1 meter. And for the minimum slab thickness, to control deflection, ACI code, which is American Concrete Institute, 9.5.2.1 specifies minimum thickness values for one-way solid slabs. For one-way solid slabs, for simply supported, that's L over 20, one end continuous, that's L over 24, both ends continuous, that's L over 28, and cantilever is L over 10. And for the minimum concrete cover, according to ACI code 7.1 or 7.7.1, the following minimum concrete cover is to be provided. Concrete not exposed to weather or in contact with the ground, larger than 36 diameter millimeter bar, 
and the spacing should be or concrete cover should be 4 cm and 36 millimeter diameter and smaller bars that's 2 cm and for concrete exposed to weather or in contact with ground 19 millimeter and larger bars that's 5 cm 16 millimeter diameter and smaller bars that's 4 cm and concrete cast against and permanently exposed to earth that's 7.5 centimeter or this is 75 millimeter 40 millimeter 50 millimeter 20 millimeter and 40 millimeter and that's the concrete cover or minimum concrete cover for one-way slab and for the span according to ACI code 8.7.1 if the slab rests freely on its supports, the span's length or the span length may be taken equal to the clear span plus the depth of the slab but need not exceed the distance between centers of supports. And for bar spacing, the lateral spacing of the flexural bars should not exceed three times the thickness H or 18 inch according to ACI code 7.6.5. The lateral spacing of temperature and shrinkage reinforcement should not be placed farther apart than 5 times the slab thickness or 18 inch according to ACI code 7.12.2 which means that's 18 inch more than or it should be 5 times the slab thickness or 18 inches. And for the maximum reinforcement ratio, reinforcement ratio is the ratio of the reinforcement area to gross concrete area based on total depth of slab. And for one-way solid slabs are designed as rectangular sections subjected to shear and moment. Thus, the maximum reinforcement ratio corresponds to a net tensile strain in the reinforcement which is equivalent to 0.004. Minimum reinforcement ratio for temperature and shrinkage reinforcement according to ACI code 7.12.2.1 slabs with grade 40 or 50 deformed bars that's equivalent to 0 0.0020 slabs with grade 60 deformed bars that's 0 0.0018 slabs where reinforcement with yield strength and exceeding 60,000 PSI that's 0 0.0018 multiplied by 60,000 all over F sub Y. And for flexural reinforcement, according to ACI code 10.5.4, the minimum flexural reinforcement is not to be less than the shrink rate reinforcement or 0 0.0018. Example, a one-way slab having a total depth of 200 mm with a 25 mm clear covering at the bottom the steel reinforcement is 20 mm diameter, spacing of steel reinforcement is 125 mm on centers, FC prime is equal to 30 MPa or megapascal, FY is equal to 400 megapascal, considering 1 meter width of slab. The depth or the total depth of the slab is 200 mm, a clear covering of 25 mm and a 20 millimeter diameter bar. Number one, determine the depth of stress block for a strip of slab or equivalent to A. Number two, determine the moment capacity of a strip of slab. And number three, determine the working live load per square meter if the slab were used on a three meter simple span. The concrete mass may be taken at 2,500 kilogram per meter cube, which includes the weight of reinforcement. Use NSCP load factors. NSCP stands for National Structural Code of the Philippines. Solution Number one Depth of stress block. The diagram at one meter strip or one thousand millimeter with the total depth of 200 millimeter and the effective depth d is equals to the depth a total depth which is 200 millimeter minus the clear covering of 25 millimeter 
and the diameter of steel reinforcement which is one half or one half of 20 mm and the effective depth is equal to 165 millimeter and number bars number of bars is equal to the one meter strip which is 1000 millimeter and we divide by 1000 millimeter divided by the spacing on center to center which is 125 millimeter and number of bars is equivalent to 1000 divided by 125 that's 8 we need to find the total reinforcement or steel reinforcement bar total area for steel reinforcement or A sub S is equals to the area of steel which is pi over 4 diameter of bar which is 20 mm squared and multiplied by 8 number of bars and the total steel reinforcement is equivalent to 2513.27 and it is in millimeter squared so that's the area for steel and compression is equal to tension for compression C is equal to tension and the formula for C is equal to 0.85 FC prime AB and for tension in this diagram that's ASFY or the total area for steel multiplied by the yield strength and 0.85 FC prime which is 30 and A which is the unknown or the stress block depth and B which is equivalent to the strip which is 1000 millimeter and equate that to the area for steel reinforcements that's 2513.27 the 2513.27 and multiplied by F Y which is 400 megapascal so that's 400 megapascal and A is equal to 2513.27 multiplied by 400 and divide everything by 0.85 times 30 times 1000 and A or the depth of stress block is equal to 39.42 millimeter and this is the answer and for number two determine the moment capacity of a strip of slab so that's number two which is moment capacity moment capacity and the formula for moment capacity mu is equals to theta asfy multiplied by d minus a over 2 where d is the effective depth which is 165 millimeter a sub s that's 2513.27 f sub y that's 400 megapascal and a which is 39.42 millimeter and the factor that's 0 0.90 so equate 0 0.90 0 0.90 multiplied by a sub s which is 2513.27 and f sub y which is 400 megapascal so 400 and the depth which is our effective depth that's 165 minus a which is 39.42 and divide by 2 and the moment capacity mu is equal to 131.46 times 10 to the power 6 that's newton millimeter and for kilonewton meter that's 131.46 kilonewton meter and that's mu and this is the moment capacity for number three 
determine the working live load per square meter if the slab were used on a 3 meter simple span. Concrete mass may be taken at 2,500 kilogram per meter cube. So we will convert 2,500 kilogram per meter cube working live load so dead load is equal to the thickness of the slab that's 200 millimeter or 0.2 and 1 meter strip so 1 meter and 2,500 kilogram per meter cube so 2,500 kilogram per meter cube and convert kilogram to Newton we multiplied by 9.81 and the dead load is equivalent to 4,905 Newton per meter or that's 4.905 kilonewton per meter and that's the dead load and for a slab with a simple span of 3 meters, mu is equal to wl squared all over 8. That's the total weight times l squared all over 8. So mu, which is equivalent to 131.46, is equal to w times simple span of 3 meters squared all over 8 or w is equals to 131.46 times 8 and divide divide by 3 squared and w is equal to 116.85 kilonewton per meter so that's the total load and to find the live load the combination of load w is equals to 1.4 dead load plus 1.7 live load and W that's 116.85 is equal to 1.4 dead load is 4.905 4.905 plus 1.7 and the unknown live load live load is equal to 116.85 minus 1.4 times 4.905 and we divide divide by 1.7 and the total live load is equal to 64.7 kilonewton per meter and this is the final answer